recording started there you go excellent well good evening again everyone and welcome to the webinar tonight and remember our goal is our focus is not on presenting a treatment or cure but on helping your body recover while your, your body takes or your doctor takes care of your disease if you have one but really if you do things right, you'll have less and less need to be admitted in the hospital or even to, to visit the doctor. Now, are we trying to put doctors out of business? Impossible. <laughs> doctors will always be in business. But I think doctors themselves will, will also appreciate it when their patients take care of themselves in between doctor visits. And I think uh, in that way, everybody wins. And the key, or one of the keys, to, uh, to taking good care, care of yourself is your realization that optimum nutrition is the medicine or is the is one of the keys to helping your body work well. And Dr. Pauling, 48 PhDs and two unshared Nobel, Nobel Prizes, I, I, I would say he has something legitimate to say or talk about. And Dr. Harry tonight is our presenter and he is the author of Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today. And this is a natural approach to uh, people with heart concerns about their cardiovascular health. And I want to encourage you to, to, to get this book. It's on, available on, on Amazon, and I believe he has it in his office too. So you can actually um, order it from e e either of both places. What, again, I said I liked about Dr. Harry is that he gives you practical ways to, to take control of your cardiovascular health. Um, you, you are able to find a place to measure the integrity to see what your baseline is, how healthy your cardiovascular system is. He shows you what you need to do, what you need to take to improve the health, and then you can measure again the progress. That, I tell you, is strength. That is what really, I believe, helps people take control. And so, uh, again, it's without much further ado, I'm going to have to transfer this to Dr. Harry. But uh, let me see if I can make him presenter. All right. So, Dr. Harry, over to you. Thank you again so much for coming over, joining us. Are you there, Dr. Harry? Yeah, I am. I'm waiting for it to... Uh... Did you, does a window yeah, appear? It just, just appeared. Okay. Do you see my slide? I see it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's talk. And um, we certainly are not trying to put doctors out of business. Obamacare is going to take care of that. <laughs> so <laughs> moving right along. Uh, tonight's topic is called the cardiovascular cure, and cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in America today. Um, cardiovascular system is made up of uh, 100,000 miles of arteries, veins, and capillaries, enough to go around the world two and a half times if we were to lay you out, uh, you know, those arteries out. So it's an amazing system. Those of you that have not yet seen the amazing man or whatever the uh, the museums have this uh, thing that goes to all these different, uh, to all the museums throughout the country that um, shows uh, it kind of like the human being cut up and showing the arteries, showing the heart, showing the liver, showing the, and it's just an amazing thing. So if you get a chance to see that, uh, make sure you get uh, to wherever it is and see it. Um, but tonight's topic is the cardiovascular cure. Uh, the problem is in this country is 2,500 Americans will die today. Um, and that's not just today, it's every day. Now, to put that in perspective, that's six jumbo jets crashing, falling out of the sky, everybody on board dying. If that were to happen, they would lock down the, I know the Federal Aviation Administration would lock down our, our, our airways and another plane wouldn't be allowed to take off. Yet 2,500 Americans die and nothing is done about it. That's also equivalent to a football stadium of fans, every one of those people dying in 30 days. Think about that. Uh, you know, these universities, they hold like 100,000 people. They're just huge. My da daughter attended the University of Illinois, which is a top 10 school, and I would go to the games uh, uh, 
uh, father dad type things uh, or dad daughter type things and uh, just amazed at the amount of people that pack into uh, one of these stadiums and that would be equivalent to everybody in the stadium dying in 30 days it's just an amazing figure it's also equivalent to we just celebrated, not celebrated, but recognized uh, the memory of 9-11, and um, that would be a little of a 9-11 happening each and every day, and yet nothing is be, not being done about it. Of course, on your death certificate, it'll say death by natural causes, but I'm here to tell you that there's nothing natural about dying from a heart attack or stroke, that whether you have high blood pressure or diabetes or whatever, it can be reversed, it can be prevented, and, um, you know, there's nothing normal about dying. It's, it'd be the same as walking out onto the expressway and stepping in front of an 18-wheeler and saying, that's normal. It's not normal. I am the author of Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today. It is a natural approach to uh, preventing and reversing heart disease. This picture, by the way, doesn't look like me anymore because I have a, a beard and uh, mustache, but uh, that was in a different day. <laughs> Fatal heart attacks happen all the time. Um, just ask Damian Nash. Well, you can't ask him because he died uh, at 24 years old. He was a, a famous running back for the Denver Broncos, and in a charity basketball game in offseason, he collapsed and died. No prior warning, no prior history of heart disease. Or ask this gentleman, John Spencer, who was an actor who played on the Emmy Award-winning show West Wing, and um, he actually died twice of a heart attack. How do you die twice of a heart attack? Well, he died, his actor that he was, or the person he was portraying in uh, West Wing had a heart attack and died, and then three months in real life he had a heart attack and died. And of course, we all know about Tim Russert, one of the most beloved uh, journalists, um, uh, worked for ABC News, and um, in preparing to go on the air for uh, ABC News, he had a massive heart attack and died. What's ironic about it is, Two weeks prior, he was given a clean bill of health by his doctor, and he was doing everything his doctor told him to do. So here you are, you're given a clean bill of health, everything looks good, Molly, just keep up the good work. And in the meantime, we're going to put you on a statin, a blood pressure medicine, a diabetes medicine, I want you to exercise, and I want you to be on a diet. He did all of that, yet two weeks later had a massive heart attack and died. I mean, he did everything his doctor told him to do. Dennis Johnson was a uh, three-time world champion, played with Boston Celtics, Larry Bird, um, and uh, he was coaching his basketball team, just a practice session, he walked outside between two players and he died. They said he was fine one minute, dead, dead the next. Now the reason I talk about Dennis Johnson is his age. Here you can see he's 52 years old. Um, when I put this talk together, I was 52, and I thought to myself, man, if I were to die today, what would I miss out on? Well. One thing I would have missed out on is walking my uh, one of my princesses down the aisle. Uh, it's a special moment for a father to walk your daughter down the aisle. I actually have a video version of this that I do in my talk, and I always get teared up every time I show it. And I think it's a combination of her crying in that picture and also the music is, but it always chokes me up every time I do this in a live uh, presentation. Um, and what's interesting is, Four, uh, just four months later, I walked my other daughter down the aisle. Now, lucky for me, I ran out of daughters because I certainly ran out of money. But this is a special moment in time that only a father can, that's alive, can actually uh, enjoy. And I was at one of my uh, lectures I was doing in Ohio. A lady came up to me afterwards, and she said, I just want you to know that my husband, uh, my son, walked my daughter down the aisle because my husband tragically had a heart attack and died at age 52 and I was like holy cow what a small world and it's happening all the time and uh, I want to tell you that this year was kind of a special moment in time this was 2007 well guess what ah my daughter had a my first grandbaby so had I died at age 52 I would have missed out on all this now that little Samuel uh, Grayson you see there someday I'll be attending his graduations, his t-ball games, his soccer matches, his um, wedding, and, and so on, because I plan on living to 120 years, um, 
old, and that's what the Bible says you should live to, and unfortunately the average age of Americans right now is 75, 76, which is a, a dramatic improvement from 1900 when it was 45, 50, but still we've got a long way to go, but uh, I'm trying to create a group of people that will live to 120 years old. Wouldn't you like to be part of that? Heart disease is our number one killer. It accounts for 50% of all deaths in the U.S. There's a heart attack every 20 seconds. There's a death every 60 seconds. Think about that. By the time I do this talk, you know, some 60 people will die. Over 1 million heart attacks each year. It kills more than nine next causes of death, and it's a global problem. Uh, this is a death clock, and it shows there were 33 million people that had died, and cardiovascular disease, 9 million, uh, cancer, uh, 4 million, respiratory, 2 million, and so on. But you can see the number one killer worldwide is cardiovascular disease or heart disease. And it, that clock continues to, to click away, tick away. We're all ticking time bombs. Uh, sudden cardiac death accounts for 300,000 deaths each year. Now, this is different than normal uh, heart disease, normal heart attacks, which are heart attacks. This is cardiac, uh, this is sudden cardiac death. This is a sudden cardiac arrest, which is different than a heart attack. Cardiac arrest is the heart starts to fibrillate, starts to rain oxygen, and in seven minutes you are dead. 300,000 deaths each year, and there's no prior warning to this. 95% die before reaching the hospital, 70% die at home, 100,000 are athletes, so this doesn't just affect people who are out of shape. 100,000, one-third of the people that die from sudden cardiac death are actually athletes in perfect health. Sudden cardiac death takes the lives of six children every week. These are our football players and basketball players and swimmers that we read about in the paper. And we say, oh my, they were so young. Almost one-third of sudden cardiac arrests outside of homes and hospitals occur in fitness clubs and sports facilities, according to the American Heart Association. It's just places people go to be healthy. Well, it's not working out that way. And it's not just a man killer. We think heart disease is a man killer. However, one out of every 2.5 women will die of heart disease. And if we compare it to men, more women will die this year from heart disease than men. Now, if we look here, breast cancer is a American uh, woman's tragedy. Um, but that accounts for 43,000 deaths compared to over 500,000 deaths of women. So we need to do more for, we have plenty of, well not plenty, we could always use more, but we have, you know, pink this, pink that, bat day, ribbons, walkathons, marathons, education as far as that goes, but there's nothing being done for women and heart disease. Sixty percent of our youth are at risk for heart disease. This was a survey done that showed that sixty percent of five to ten year olds already had a risk factor for heart disease, whether high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high insulin levels. In fact, we always thought that heart disease looked like this, age 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, oh, now it's starting to happen. Nope, it doesn't work that way. We know that during the Korean War, they did autopsies on 2,000 American soldiers that were 18 to 19 years old. 77% were found to have lesions and heart disease. Also, a study was done in 1993 on autopsies on 111 young males that died in car accidents. 78% were found to have heart disease, 30% had vessels that were more than halfway closed. This is 18 and 19 year olds that had vessels that were 60 years old. Oh my goodness. Now here's some of the signs of heart disease. Um, he, this is what arterial sclerosis or hardening of the arteries looks like. Um, this is what your blood normally looks like. This is what it looks like after fast food. It's like oil and vinegar, oil and water. They just don't mix. And of course that leads to, to fat co collecting and forming in the arteries. Um, this is a beautiful artery. This one is 70% blockage. You've got a calcium deposit, inflammation. Uh, doesn't look too good. By the way, you have no symptoms at this point. When it gets to about 90%, you can see the plaque got bigger, the calcium deposit got bigger. Now you start having some uh, constriction. Now you start having some issues because the blood flow is being cut off. Now if it's going to your heart, you start having chest pain. If it's going to your brain, you start getting dizzy spells or blurred vision or different things like that until finally you have a stroke. If it's going to your kidneys, uh, usually there's no indicate. Kidneys are one of those, like the liver, that there's very... Uh, no signs until it's too late. And the peripheral, you'll start getting some uh, pain in your legs, uh, peripheral arterial disease. So the, what we want to do is look like this, this beautiful picture here. Now, standard medical treatment uses drugs or surgery to take care of you. 
where we, I, like, I like to say Drano or Rotorooter, because they're either trying to thin your blood or they're trying to shove a catheter in, up through your groin and clean you out and put in a balloon, a stent, or a bypass. But unfortunately, these are not the answer. In fact, uh, studies are coming out saying drugs are much better than doing the expensive procedures. And I'm here to tell you, every drug is based on something in nature. They just can't patent it, so then they go into a laboratory and create a chemical that might look good on paper as the same chemical makeup as that uh, you know, plant that's found in nature, but it's not the same in your body. Are you at risk? You've got to ask yourself, are you at risk? Well, here's some of the risk factors uh, you can control. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, cigarette smoking, obesity, physical inactivity, dyslipidemia, which is fat in the blood, poor kidney function. These, according to the American Heart Association, are risk factors you can't control. Now, there are risk factors you cannot control. Your age, 65 and older, uh, four out of five people will have heart disease. Uh, ethnicity, um, darker complexions, uh, African Americans, Black Americans, uh, Latino Americans, Asian Americans are have a higher tendency for heart disease. Your gender, uh, uh, remember men at earlier ages, but then after 65, women pass up men. And family history, I just talked to a gentleman today who is on nitroglycerin, and him and his two brothers have all had quadruple bypasses. What are the chances of that happening? Four, three, they're all two years apart. Every one of them has had quadruple bypass. Um, all of them are on uh, just a number of different medications and taking nitroglycerin. And I'm excited for him because we're going to straighten him up. Uh, now, what do we need to do? Well, one of the things we need to do is, is you know, these risk factors, you, you know, even though they look good on paper, you don't know what's happening internally. You might say, well, I have those risk factors, I don't have any of them, I'm doing fine. But you don't know that. And according to SHAPE Task Force, this is 40 cardiologists who got together. They call themselves Screening for Heart Attack Prevention and Education. They said prevention before intervention. They published it in the American Journal of Cardiology, which your cardiologist should be reading. And this is what they said. We can prevent 90,000 deaths from cardiovascular disease and save $21 billion annually. Their guidelines called for non-invasive. That means no pain, no needles, no tears of all asymptomatic men starting at age 45 and women starting at age roughly 55 or even young, younger. I, I do uh, you know, 20, 30-year-olds. It's interesting to see because, you know, what those studies show, uh, a 19-year-old could have 60-year-old arteries, and we find that. Uh, we hope to build new momentum in cardiology. Great. That inspires physicians to modern technology for prevention of a heart attack rather than using expensive technology only to treat a heart attack. Now, this is 40 cardiologists speaking to cardiologists, and this is what they say, which is too late and results in benefits too little to benefit patients. What they're basically saying is by the time they come to us, it's too late. There's very little we can do for them, and we're bankrupting the system, and they're absolutely correct. This was published in July 2006. Nothing was done about it. Uh, we do have the digital pulse wave analyzer out there. Um, FDA cleared class 2 medical device, means non-invasive, takes a snapshot of your arteries, uh, tests your heart rate, heart strength, artery flexibility, artery blockage, hydration levels, overall cardiovascular health. Best of all, it's quick. It's affordable, it's painless, and it is more reliable than a test done in a hospital that are very expensive. In 60 seconds, it runs seven separate tests, electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, duplex Doppler, pulse oximeter, cardiovascular profiler, heart rate variability, augmentation index, and an MRI. Now, it doesn't do exactly what these do, but it does similar uh, parameters, and the best thing is it's non-invasive and it's it, you know, these tests will cost you $2,500 to $5,000 in a hospital. And um, this test might run you $50 to $100. Uh, we give you the results right on the spot, unless, like, like, unle unlike le lifeline screening, which charge uh, $140, and uh, you get the results in 21 days. And then if they find something, you've got to go to a doctor and pay another $50 to $75 to have him tell you you're not doing good. Well, we show you immediately what is going on. I just did uh, four people today. They drove an hour and a half to come to my office, and um, they were very uh, surprised at what they saw. It'll grade you from A to G, A being really good, G being a clinical event. Clinical event. You know, those tests in the hospital that gave people like Bill Clinton and Tim Russer a clean bill of health, uh, this test would have told them, hey, guys, you're a clinical event. You better do something. 
So this test is very accurate in what it measures. What's your preference? Do you want to be a 30-year-old with 60-year-old arteries, or would you prefer to be a 60-year-old with 30-year-old arteries? I think I would prefer the latter. Now, the greatest thing of what we're doing is not just testing people and throwing them out and saying, good luck. We're we actually have a discovery for the first time that uh, has incredible science backing it up, the, such good science that you can take it to your doctor. And he should say, yeah, I know about that. Um, and if he doesn't, then I go find another doctor. Uh, three Americans won the Nobel Prize in 1998. Uh, they discovered that uh, your body creates a gas called nitric oxide, uh, which actually causes the blood vessels to relax and widen. And for this, they were awarded the Nobel Prize. Um, the way they discovered it was through working with nitroglycerin. We know that uh, people that work in a, a dynamite factory um, never suffered heart disease when they were at work, but when they go home, they would have you know some angina or chest pain, and then when they go to work, they would disappear. So that led to the discovery that nitroglycerin is a vasodilator, and um, uh, Alfred Nobel, who you see here. Um, eventually, when he died, he took all his money and he put it into a, uh, he had no family, so he put it into a bank account, Swiss account that pays, the interest goes to pay all the Nobel Prizes. And how ironic that years later, something that he discovered, which was, that made him rich, was dynamite, working with nitroglycerin, also led to the Nobel Prize that it, he awards. Well, he doesn't award, but he his funds pay for it. By the way, when he was in his 60s, he developed chest pain. His doctor told him to take nitroglycerin, he wouldn't take it. Um, and he died at age 64 of a massive heart attack. This is Lyndon Johnson, uh, one of our ex-presidents. And he also had uh, developed uh, chest pain in his 60s, coronary artery disease. He was on nitroglycerin. In fact, you would see him taking nitroglycerin on television when he delivered a State of the Union address. By the way, he died at age 64 of a massive heart attack. So whether you took the nitroglycerin or not, it is not the cure, it's only a band-aid. I explained that to this gentleman today I talked to on the phone. Uh, nitric oxide does everything everywhere, according to Jonathan Samuel, a professor of medicine uh, of, at Duke University. He says, uh, you cannot name one major cellular response or physiological effect in which nitric oxide is not implicated. It's involved in complex behavioral changes in the brain. Airway, relaxation, I talked to somebody that had asthma, said you've got to get on arginine. Beating of the heart, uh, one of the tests I did today, the lady had an irregular heartbeat. Last time I tested her, this time it was gone. Dilation of blood vessels, regulation of intestinal movement, functional blood cells, the immune system, even the way fingers and arms move. So nitric oxide, as it goes through your circulatory system, that 100,000 miles, it is doing everything everywhere. What causes the decrease in nitric oxide? Age. Unfortunately, the older you get, the less nitric oxide is produced. And if you suffer from heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high homocysteine, C-reactive protein, neurological damage, arthritis, allergies, ulcers, okay, that lowers your nitric oxide even more. If you have any of these, chances are you're taking drugs. That, guess what? Catch 22. You think it's doing good. It's actually doing more damage. Alcohol, tobacco use, trans fatty acids, you know, any of those fried foods you like to eat, cookies, candy, chips, cakes, all those things uh, that we like to munch on um, have trans fatty acids. Sickle cell disease uh, for, for a, a small segment of our society. But all these things lower your nitric oxide. How do you raise it? Well, bad news is exercise. However, the good news is you'd have to exercise 24 hours a day, seven days a week to increase your nitric oxide uh, to any good level. And since we can't seem to give it 10 minutes, I don't think we're going to give it that much time. Healthy diet, yep, I believe in eating nothing but uh, fruits and vegetables. And unfortunately, they will not increase your nitric oxide because great antioxidants fight cancer and many other things, but not uh, going to help the cardiovascular system because it does not produce nitric oxide. Dr. Salvador Moncada uh, from England discovered that the endothelium uses arginine to make nitric oxide. The endothelium is the inner walls of your arteries, veins, and capillaries, and he discovered that arginine is the only raw material that will convert over to nitric oxide in your bloodstream. 
what is arginine? It's one of the 22 natural occurring amino acids necessary for life. Every day you should get 30% of your diet should be protein because protein is the two by fours. It is the, the, what gives the cells structure. So you need that protein. Um, there are 22 amino acids that make up protein. Um, and arginine is just one of those amino acids found uh, richly in red meat, fish, and nuts. Uh, the average American gets about three grams in the diet. It's your body's key source of nitrogen. And there's over, oh, today there's probably over 120,000 peer-reviewed publications dating all the way back to 1927. There was a book written, it's out of print now, called The Arginine Solution. I think it's one of the best books on the market uh, concerning arginine, Dr. Fried and Merrill really break it down well. They said, in the field of medicine and health, it is one of the revolutions of our time. The discovery of the amino acid arginine may be the magic bullet for the cardiovascular system. Remember what Dr. Stamler said, it does everything everywhere. That's what a magic bullet is. It's, we want to take one thing that does everything. It fixes all our problems. On the opening cover, open clogged arteries, reduce risk of heart disease, boost potency with natural alternative Viagra, improve your immune system, and more. They called it the miracle molecule. This is John Cook. Um, he is actually in charge of vascular medicine at Stanford. He says there's magic in all of us. It comes in the shape of a molecule known as nitric oxide, a power substance so powerful that it can actually protect you from a heart attack or stroke. Think about that. Your body can produce its own heart medicine. You don't need to take all these different heart medicines. Your body can produce its own. Your body knows how to defend itself. Your body knows how to survive. Not always make you comfortable because sometimes in that being uncomfortable, it is telling you there's something wrong. But your body does know how to survive. When you, when you confuse your body by giving it toxic poisons that are made up, are made up of prescription drugs, that is not giving your body what it needs to heal itself. Nitric oxide is your body's best defense against heart disease. The body is capable of healing itself. What you do with this magic is up to you. He also proved that it melts plaque away. Here you can see um, this artery. The pink is actually plaque buildup on the artery wall. Once treated with arginine, you can see that same artery. It's gone. In his book, he says, as nitric oxide burns off in the blood, it removes plaque with it, so it actually melts away plaque. By the way, he, um, after sitting under Dr. Uh, Salvador Moncada in England, he came back to America. He created his own pharmaceutical company called Cook Pharma, and then he developed his first arginine product. It came in a bar called Heart Bar. Heart bar was uh, the first medical food for cardiovascular disease. Now, medical food is different than a dietary supplement. Medical food means it comes under FDA jurisdiction, and doctors basically prescribe it. Um, but this medical food uh, was in a bar form. Later, we introduced a, a uh, orange powder. Um, but it was never actually approved as a medical food. Um, it was nothing more than a dietary supplement. But um, they were, he sold it to a pharmaceutical company uh, called United Therapeutics for $83 million, all the rights to it. And unfortunately, the FDA and FTC shut um, that company down because it was not a medical food. It was never approved as a medical food. But it is a dietary supplement. They opened up their doors months later as a dietary supplement, but never gained the ground that they had lost um, after that uh, that problem with the FDA and FTC. However, he did have seven patents for vascular disease on this medical food. And you don't get a patent unless you can prove something. Well, here's one. Uh, L-arginine in the treatment of hypertension and other vascular disorders. So we know that it works with high blood pressure and other vascular disorders. Arginine in the treatment of vascular degenerative diseases like arterial sclerosis and atherosclerosis. Uh, use of arginine for inhibiting lesion formation after vascular injury. So when somebody has a heart attack or whatever lesions form, uh, which is scar tissue, it inhibits the lesions from forming, including inhibiting restenosis, which is reblockage in an artery. Also, arginine specifically in the body of a stent to inhibit restenosis. Oftentimes when they put in a stent, guess what? You need another one, and then you need another one, and another one, another one, another one. So almost, I mean, my mom goes in every year and she gets two stents. It's crazy. 
Um, but this arginine actually is was, was specifically in the body of a stent inhibits that reblockage. Use of arginine as a dietary supplement in improving vascular function of your cardiovascular system, like I said, is the most important uh, organ in your body. And um, the ar use of arginine to enhance aerobic exercise performance. So these are uh, these are critical, important statins. Now, it's it's basically on the product. You can't patent arginine. Arginine anybody can take. So uh, you can't have a patent on it. But the patent was on the product, uh, heart bar. Now here's uh, more evidence. This is nitric oxide produced from arginine. Uh, will lower blood pressure. Will lower cholesterol, triglycerides. Improve diabetes. Uh, type 1 and type 2, improve sexual function in men and women, reduce blood clots and strokes, improves congestive heart failure, wound healing, improves kidney and liver function, improves memory, uh, both long-term and short-term, as well as cognitive functions, increases the growth hormone, which is anti-aging, and improves muscle growth and performance for athletes. So this is evidence that truly demands a verdict. Here's just one of those studies. This was on stable angina patients or patients that have chest pain and live with it. They might live years with it. Unstable would be a heart attack. But what uh, Dr. Maxwell and his team did was broke people into three groups. They gave three months of drugs, and you can see below normal. didn't really help them. Now we look at three months after a bypass, and yippee, we've got a little bit of improvement there. But look at this, arginine, not three months, just two weeks. Look at the difference in vitality, physical functioning, role of physical, and pain reduction. So it uh, tremendous difference. Now, how can a doctor look at this and then say, well, we've got to schedule you for surgery instead of saying, hey, let's get you started on some arginine. If that doesn't work, we'll go for surgery. But nope, they don't do that. Uh, arginine and diabetes, we know that 8% of Americans or 24 million are diabetic, another 57 million are pre-diabetic, and of course that goes with uh, sugar consumption, you can see it's off the chain. Uh, end stage result for diabetes is a heart attack, a stroke, blindness, kidney failure, or amputation, which is not a pretty sight. Small cut on the foot, can't heal because there's no circulation, uh, it becomes infected, gangrene sets in, and they begin to amputate, first a toe, then a foot, then a leg, and so on. Uh, this is Dr. Pendergrass, a colleague of mine. I met him when we were in Hartbart together, and um, uh, he's an endocrinologist. And Dr. Cook and him were good friends. Uh, they 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 both uh, work out of Stanford. And Dr. Pendergrass started uh, after talking to John Cook. He decided to put his diabetic patients on arginine. So he put them on Hartbar later with something else, and I think it's another product today. But he continues to use arginine in his practice, and he will tell you that in 10 years, uh, he discovered that every year he would send uh, 240 patients to see three cardiologists in his area because of the end-stage results. However, in using arginine in his practice with over 3,000 patients a year, um, he only sent one patient in 10 years. So what a big difference that is. So, And he will tell you it reverses actually type 2 diabetes and actually helps to increase the lifespan to normal for a type 1 diabetic. So it's a wonderful. What about arginine and uh, the sexual revolution? Time Magazine said making love can boost the heart relief pain and keep you healthy. Uh, entire issue was dedicated to that. 80% uh, of sexual dysfunction is directly attributable to nitric oxide failure. According to New England Journal of Medicine, scientists proved definitively that nitric oxide translates to sexual potency. Right in Science Magazine and Stanford study showed that arginine can improve a woman's sexual desire and overall satisfaction. So arginine is the answer for any uh, problems that might be showing up in that area. All right. Uh, what about black Americans? Why are they five times more likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease? A study was done at Ohio State University published in circulation. Dr. Thaddeus Malinsky and his team showed that the cardiovascular system of black, black subjects have more enzymes to produce nitric oxide and can be more efficient than those of white subjects. So you should be sitting there saying, well, wait a minute, if that's, you're telling us that that's the cure, nitric oxide, and they can produce more and have it more efficient than white subjects, then what's going on here? Well, what they also discovered is black subjects did not produce enough of what? The amino acid L-arginine to complete the process of nitric oxide production, and in so doing produced a superoxidant known as peroxynitrate, which increased cancer and heart disease five times. 
So uh, he concludes by saying what is amazing is the system has great potential to produce nitric oxide and can be corrected very efficiently at relatively early age. So um, the system is set up. I mean, it was created that way by God for a reason. And probably the main reason is I can get plenty of vitamin D by going into the sun 10 minutes a day. Um, a black American cannot because of the pigment of the sun. So God probably created you to produce more nitric oxide through, um, through enzymes that he gave you. But unfortunately, it, it requires arginine to do that, and we just don't get enough of it in our food anymore. So the cure, people, is simple. Early detection will save lives, supplementing with arginine. According to Dr. Lignaro, who won the Nobel Prize, that will lead to no more heart disease. Now, how much do you need to take, according to Dr. Louis Ignaro? He recommends five grams a day. Now, you can go anywhere and get arginine. You can buy it on the internet. You can buy it in big kegs, you know, 20 pound kegs. Arginine is a very bitter substance. So if you were buy arginine on the internet, you better be prepared to mix it with something to cover up that bitterness. You can also go to GNC or health food stores and buy arginine in pill form. Unfortunately, because of the absorption problem of taking pills or capsules, you'd have to take 58 to get 5 grams. And if you need 10 grams or 15 grams, now you're talking almost you know, 200 pills. Um, or you can take it in a, uh, a liquid form, uh, which would offer 98% absorption. Uh, my latest formula that I, I've uh, worked very hard on is called Cardio for Life. It does contain the five grams of arginine Dr. Louis Ignaro recommends. It also contains 200 milligrams of citrulline, which Dr. Louis Ignaro recommends because this other amino acid actually helps to stabilize the arginine, uh, the nitric oxide, once it's produced. Uh, it actually helps it to last longer in the body, otherwise it would burn off very rapidly. Uh, there's 2,500 IUs of vitamin D3 in here. I, I believe every person should be taking 5,000 IUs, so you can, I, I actually do a do, double scoop of this every morning. It's a powder, you just mix it with as much water as you want. Uh, the, the more water you add, the less sweet it is. Uh, 500 milligrams of omega-3. Uh, we know that uh, some, some heart disease uh, is caused from um, a plaque buildup. Others is caused from, 50% is caused from inflammation in the arteries. That's where omega-3 comes in. We get plenty of omega-6 in our diet, and plenty of omega-9 in our diet. We don't get enough omega-3 in our diets. And so this is specifically 500 milligrams of omega-3. If you're doing it twice a day, you're getting 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 a day, which is really good. 100 milligrams of CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, is, uh, is really important for energy, but it also it's important for muscles, especially your heart muscle. Um, every cell of your body uh, has a furnace called the mitochondria. It needs fuel to burn, and that CoQ10 is that fuel. It also has 50 milligrams of 100% resveratrol. Resveratrol is, uh, there's a lot coming out on resveratrol. On my website, I talk about, I show the 60 minutes interview that was done concerning resveratrol. But resveratrol is the pigment of the red grape, and they know that, well, first of all, they know that people in France and, and the Mediterranean drink a lot of red wine with their meals, and they attribute that to the reduction in heart disease, even though they eat more saturated fat. Uh, this is equivalent to drinking 38 glasses of wine per serving, 38 glasses of wine. So if you're doing a double scoop like me I do in the morning, that's like uh, drinking 100 glasses of wine. Or how many bottles of that would be? <laughs> but uh, it doesn't, there's no alcohol, so you don't get that. But um, they're also doing studies, and, and they're saying that this is the fountain of youth, that uh, taking resveratrol besides preventing heart disease and many other things, is also adding years to your life. So resveratrol is very key uh, in this formula. Powerful B complex, we add B1, B2, B3, uh, B4, B5, B6, um, B9, which is folic acid, 400 micrograms, as well as 500 micrograms of methylcobalamin, which is B12. And we now know that uh, studies are showing that a deficiency in B12 will lead to Alzheimer's. Uh, B12, uh, most products in the market might contain six micrograms of B12. This has 500 micrograms. You do this twice a day, you're getting a B12 shot every day and saving yourself a thousand bucks. 
100 uh, micrograms of selenium. We know that selenium is depleted in our soil in this country, and because of that, it leads to, to heart disease and cancer and many other conditions, thyroid problems, uh, hypothyroid problems, and so on. Uh, so we have 100 micrograms of selenium. Uh, we have 60 milligrams of OPCs. OPCs is your, uh, uh, um, is your grape seed, grape skin extract, and pycnodulin. Um, we also have vitamin C, vitamin E, which are great antioxidants, but this is actually, OPCs are actually uh, 50 times more powerful than vitamin E and 20 times more powerful than vitamin C. And Dr. Lignaro uh, highly recommends taking antioxidants. You need to, if you're going to do arginine, and you're buying it, you know, from some massive shipper and you're, you're buying uh, 20 uh, pound tubs, uh, make sure you're taking citrulline with that and at least antioxidants because that nitric oxide gas, when it was created, when it is created in your body, that gas is actually a, um, a oxidizing agent, causes free radical damage. So that's why you need to take the antioxidants at the same time to prevent that. We also, it's sweetened with stevia, it's only 44 calories per serving, and we use a lot of FOS, and uh, that's fructooligosaccharide, which is a prebiotic. It goes straight to your, passes right through your GI tract, goes right to your colon, where it builds up the good bacteria in your colon. Um, and then we have 50 milligrams of a new ingredient called estrogen. Now, estrogen will increase amino acid absorption by 62 percent. So the five grams of arginine is like taking eight grams of arginine. Increases vitamin absorption by 50 percent. So if you look at that 500 micrograms of uh, B12, now it's 750 micrograms per serving. Increases glucose absorption by 57 percent. Our cells require glucose, so increases it by 50 percent. 7% increases ATP production, which is energy, by 18%. Decreases blood sugar by 19% for type 1 and type 2 diabetics. Increases insulin sensitivity by 38% for type 2 diabetics. And for athletes, it increases glycogen and muscle uh, 24 hours after a strenuous exercise by 60%. Just by adding this one ingredient, there's not another company on the market that adds this ingredient to an arginine formulation. Now, what does this cost you? Uh, if we do a cost comparison, you would go out and spend uh, roughly around $317 for the ingredients that are in this product. Um, and yet, you will not spend that. It actually retails for $39.95. So um, it is completely safe to take with cholesterol-lowering drugs, aspirin, anticoagulants, calcium channel blockers, digitalisase inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics, antiarrhythmics, antidepressants do not take with nitroglycerin. The gentleman I talked to today, we're working on a program to actually ease him off the nitroglycerin and onto this, and eventually he will no longer require the nitroglycerin. Please always check with your doctor before making any changes. You can't just cold turkey and stop medications. Now, I have to warn you and tell you the side effects. It's kind of part of the doctor's code is that we are to tell you the side effects. Unfortunately, your doctor doesn't tell you when he writes you that prescription because he knows that if he tells you that your liver could shut, shut down, your kidneys could fall out, you can you know, you know require an amputation, you could die, and so on and so forth. Nobody's going to take it. Well, here are your side effects. You're going to have an increased energy, improved memory, increased immune system, improved sleep, increased muscle toning, loss of weight, decrease in pain, better athletic performance, quicker wound healing, increased sexual function, and less prescription medicine. I know those are terrible side effects, but somehow we can endure them. Bottom line, people, it's your health, it's your choice. The decisions you make every day, whether to eat cornflakes or Captain Crunch, <laughs> that's how you start your day. Uh, till the time you go to bed and how many hours of sleep you get. Every decision you make is adding to your health and your wellness. And it's your health, it's your choice. Don't leave it up to a person because he wears a white jacket and has a plaque behind his desk because he'll only see you for seven minutes if he sees you at all. Physician assistants nowadays will take a look at you and he'll only come in or she'll only come in if need be. Um, <coughs> and like I said, Obamacare is going to put them out of business anyways. 
um, but it's it's really your health. So you have to, you know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. You need to educate yourself. Stay on top of things. Find out what's out there. With the Internet today, you can Google anything and, and find out anything in a matter of seconds. It's at your fingertips. No excuses, people. It is a choice, not chance, that determines our wellness and our destiny. For further information, you can call me at 630-961-5145. You can email me, questions at drharry at comcast.net. Uh, I have a website called myheartcure.com. You can visit. It has a lot of research, a lot of videos you can watch. And if you want to buy the product, you can go to mycardioforlife.com forward slash webinar. webinar. And it's important if you do that, you will get a free DVD uh, that's actually an hour and 20 minutes long. What I just did in roughly uh, 45 minutes is an hour and 20 minutes long with video and all kinds of good stuff in it. So that will be my um, treat to you. If, but make sure you put forward slash webinar so that signals me to give you that, that uh, $19.95 uh, video for free. Okay, with that I'm going to turn it back uh, over to, um, to our, our host. Today I've given you a choice between life and death. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Decisions you make don't only affect you, it actually is passed on through seven generations. So when you have children, you're passing on all those decisions you made concerning your wellness to those children. So please make the right choice. David, I will turn it back to you. Okay. Let's take this back right now. I'll, I'll hand it back to you in a second. Well, I tell you, folks, uh, these presentations just keep getting better and better. Just when you thought that he, is, he has topped himself, he does it again. <laughs> so uh, excellent presentation, excellent information. Uh, folks, you can type in your questions in the chat box to your right. Most of you know the drill, so go ahead and do that while I'm going to just make a few more announcements and then we should, we're going to hit the questions and answers. Well, one of the keys to cardiovascular health, obviously, is, is weight loss. Um, the, the fat that, that you have in your body is a big contributor to inflammation and to plaque formation in the body and in the blood vessels. And uh, Dr. Dr. Leslie is going to be doing a part two on what you need to do food-wise to reduce your weight. Detoxification and chocolate, dark chocolates, more and more research is coming out and Rick Deitch is going to be showing us some of the latest research and uh, a new technology that, that shows how you can get the best of both worlds, satisfy your cravings and still be healthy. And of course, Dr. Harry mentioned uh, diabetes. This is a growing epidemic nowadays, folks. This is something especially where kids are concerned is a major issue. I just like the fact that his product has something that addresses insulin resistance. I tell you, that is one of the keys. Insulin resistance and, uh, and making, your, making you more sensitive to insulin is one of the keys to anti-aging, one of the keys to keeping your, 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 your heart healthy. And now we're beginning to find out that even insulin resistance is one of the uh, causes or contributing factors to um, Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, believe it or not. So the more sensitive your cells are to insulin, the less there will be of circulating insulin in the body and the blood and the healthier you will be. And so that's why I'm, I am impressed really with this product. Um, you know, that one product can have so much in it and be at that price to me, that's just fascinating. So uh, great work to Dr. Harry. I encourage you folks to, to take a look at the product. And also, again, I encourage you to uh, get on our website. Look at the, uh, the wonderful, wonderful tools and resources that we have there. Share the word with other people. Become an affiliate so you can get uh, compensated for it. And please recommend speakers and experts in their fields. This is how we grow. This is uh, this month is really the busiest month ever. <laughs> we have close to 20 presentations in this month alone. That is amazing. Uh, and a lot of these experts have come from recommendations from audience members. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all your 
for your contributions. Okay, let's get back to the questions. I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on Dr. Harry's picture. If any of you still want to see his uh, his uh, address and his information, just let me know and I will hand it back to him. Okay, here is an interesting question about someone, I guess they, they, they copied this from a journal but it says that uh, uh, Dr. Baltimore, MD, the amino acids, the question is, is this true? The amino acid L-arginine, which is widely used as a health supplement, is not beneficial post-myocardial infarction and could actually be harmful, a new study suggests. The placebo-controlled vascular interaction with age in myocardial infarction trial published in the January 2004, 2006 article issue of the Journal of American Medical Association found no effect of arginine therapy on vascular stiffness or left ventricular function in post-myocardial infarct patients and suggested that it may actually worsen the clinical outcome in older patients with diffuse atherosclerosis. The lead author of the study, Dr. Stephen Schulman of John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University told Hotwire that the results show that L-arginine should not be taken by MI patients. This tri trial reinforces the idea that all treatments, even dietary supplements, need to be tested in randomized studies, he added. The question is, is this true? This was one study, and it was uh, a bogus study. The they were not given enough arginine. They were given between 1,000 and 3,000 milligrams. They were given no citrulline and no antioxidants with that. Um, it's a very dangerous situation when you're working with arginine and you're not working with a properly formula. Um, the study was conducted, this is one study that was done in 2004, and um, it, it, it is number one and Google if you put in arginine because the pharmaceutical companies don't want people to be taking arginine so they're going to always make sure they scare people away from it but um, no when Dr. Cook um, came out with heart bar he actually had when I when I got to the company there were 17,000 patients who all had myocardial infarctions or heart attacks that were taking heart bar and um, that was 17,000 compared to the one study. He had uh, all those patents prove that it's effective. So this is just one bogus study. And um, on my website, myheartcure.com, go to the research section. There's a couple of doctors that completely ripped this study apart. Hmm. Well, 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 where, where will they find this on your website? Under research. Research. Okay. Yeah, I think that's important. That's very important. All right, so what you're saying pretty much, Dr. Harry, is that uh, it doesn't matter what, cardi what stage of cardiovascular health you're in, this is beneficial? Oh, absolutely. I've, I have, uh, my goodness, over the last 12 years, I have put so many people, I mean, this guy I talked to today had a heart attack, and he's taking nitroglycerin. What do you think nitroglycerin does? It creates nitric oxide just like arginine but nitroglycerin actually damages the blood vessels where arginine repairs the blood vessels. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, how would you know when you need three scoops? Can you take too much of this? No, you can't take too much of this unless you were going to do like a half a jar at a time, but, um, and then you might get diarrhea. But um, no, um, if you're in perfect health and you just want to prevent one or two scoops is fine. Um, if you've got uh, diabetes or hypertension or any type of cardiovascular hemorrhoids or back, uh, macular degeneration or varicose veins or any kind of vascular problems, then I would do it uh, at least twice a day. Um, and if you're overweight, um, you know, over 200 pounds, you might consider doing two scoops instead of one scoop, you know. Um, because it, you know, it definitely goes by body weight. What about patients with herpes? This question always comes up. Herpes is brought on by a weakened immune system, which is usually stress, lack of sleep, or a cold or flu. 
uh, supplementing with arginine at the time of an arginine breakout will the Hopi's make it. You mean the Hopi's breakout? Right. Uh, will actually make it worse. So what you have to do is anybody that thinks they have herpes should be taking lysine, uh, 500 milligrams a day. At the first sign of a herpes outbreak, they would go to 1,000 milligrams of lysine three times a day. Now, my wife has herpes simplex, which is the cold sores or whatever. Uh, she's been taking arginine for 12 years, and with that protocol, she's never had an outbreak. Great. Uh, is a person on high blood pressure... Uh, uh, no, I can't do that. Uh, folks, if you want to take, get off your high blood pressure medication, you want, you, want, you want to use this and at the same time go see a doctor and, and uh, of course, look for a doctor who understands. But uh, we, we will not give you suggestions on how to get off your, your, blood, your medications. I will tell them this, that if you have hypertension, you need to get your own blood pressure cuff their wrist or whatever and keep a journal. Test yourself five times throughout the day. Keep that journal and when your blood when you start taking this product, your blood pressure is going to go down. When it starts going below 120 over 80, you walk into your doctor's office and say, look, I've kept a journal. This is my blood pressure. I want to start coming off this stuff. That's an excellent, excellent idea. Okay, what about patients who cannot take FOS? What does that mean, FOS? FOS is fructooligosaccharide, which is a, a, a pre, it's, it's a bacteria. And, um, well, I guess they couldn't take this product then. I've never heard of anybody like that. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't be able to take it. Um, your colon is made up of 70 trillion cells of bacteria. You want your good bacteria to be uh, in control, not the bad bacteria. If you've taken a lot of antibiotics, your bad bacteria is in control. Uh, you have to restore the flora of your colon, and fructooligosaccharide is a prebiotic, not a probiotic. Probiotic is actual bacteria. Uh, uh, prebiotics are amplify the strength of the good bacteria. So by amplifying the strength or by creating more good bacteria, it gobbles up your bad bacteria, and um, that can cause gas, like eating broccoli or cauliflower or any of those, uh, you know, great things that are good. Anything good for you causes gas, and yes, taking FOS can cause gas if your colon is really out of whack. But it's something that um, you know is really essential to get that colon in, into balance. But I've never heard of anybody not being able to take a prebiotic. Can they take a probiotic? Um, Don, you want to answer that question? All right, we'll just wait, wait for a second while she she's typing that that back back in. Okay. Yes, they can take a probiotic. Then I would say try it and see, because it. Oftentimes, it's a synergy and the balance of everything that's in the formula, so it could be different than, you know, taking FOS by itself. Okay. Most probiotics actually contain FOS. Mm -hmm. And now, would you would you say probiotics uh, have a synergistic effect with uh, with with uh, cardio for life? I take a probiotic every day myself. Okay. And one reason why you do that is? To keep the, uh, the bacteria in my colon in balance. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, that kind of covers that for the questions. Uh, this, this has been great. I tell you what, this is going to be our prize. Yeah. And the, and the person thanks you. Uh, this, this, this is a really good one. And I want to congratulate you, Dr. Harry, for your, on the birth of your first grandchild. Oh, thank you. And this is, is a boy, right? Samuel, yep. Samuel. Now, I thought you were expecting a girl. Isn't that what no. you said earlier? No. No, oh, they've it? always known it was a boy. It was a boy. Okay, great, great. Well, I'm sure he's your pride and joy. I hope you don't spoil him too much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's a very likelihood that's going to happen, huh? 
<laughs> well, he's only going to be here a year, and then they're going off to India for uh, two years. So we only get to spend a year with him. Oh wow! You're going to spoil it. definitely spoil him rotten doing that for doing that year. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you, Dr. Harry. I mean, your your information is always excellent, and the way you do it, the humorous way you do it, is always fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, folks, you have a great night. Remember, we've got lots of other webinars lined up for, for you, and we'll probably run a couple of these uh, Dr. Harry's webinars. Certainly, we'll probably make it available for the replay because this is such great information. All right, so you guys have a great evening, and God bless.